Hi, this is Cecil again. Another question that we get asked a lot is when the best time is to visit Yellowstone. And that's what I'm going to be dealing with in today's Yellowstone podcast. Not only the time of the year, but also the time of the day. Yellowstone generally opens for the summer season sometime in the third week of April and it closes again sometime in the first week of November and then the park is closed between the summer and the winter seasons. Let's talk about coming to visit in the spring. It can be a really great time to come to Yellowstone but there are a couple of downsides that you should be aware of as well. On the plus side, there is so much new life in Yellowstone in the spring. The buffalo are giving birth. A little while later, the elk start giving birth as well. The bears come out of hibernation with their cubs. If you're interested in seeing new life, then the spring could be a great time to come. The downsides are that Some of the roads are not open in Yellowstone in the spring. The National Park Service opens the roads gradually and not all at once. There's only one road in the park that stays open on a year-round basis, and that is the road up at the north entrance, from Gardner down to Mammoth Hot Springs, and then on to Tower Roosevelt, and across to the um, northeast entrance, where Cook City and Silvergate are and I won't go into why that road is open on a year-round basis on this podcast just be aware that it is. Several of the roads though open later. One of them is the road from the south entrance up towards uh, West Thumb and then across towards Old Faithful over Craig Pass and then the road that opens the latest is the road over Dunraven Pass. So be sure and check which roads are going to be open if you're going to be coming in the in the spring. You're welcome to email us if you want that information, which is um, info at yellowstonetours.net. That's info at yellowstonetours.net. You're also welcome to text us at 406-219. 8885, that's 406-219-8885, and we'd be happy to give you that information. Something else that you need to be aware of in the spring is that Yellowstone is located really high up. West Yellowstone, which is where we are based, is at 6,666 feet, believe it or not. As you go into the park, it gets even higher. Dunraven Pass, which I mentioned before, is almost at 10,000 feet. A lot of the park is up at over 8,000 feet. And the reason I mention this is that if we get precipitation, which we're going to get a lot of still in the spring, it's going to arrive in the form of snow. So it is going to be cold. The temperatures will drop below freezing most nights. And in addition, you run the risk of coming across snow if you get here pretty early. What the Park Service has started doing in recent years has been very proactive about closing roads. Rather than waiting for the snow to arrive and for people to be out there stuck on the roads, when they see that a snowstorm is forecast, they'll close the roads ahead of time. So if you're coming here early in the season, you may have a problem of not only not being able to get into the park, depending on which entrance, you are coming through, but once you're here, you may find that some of the roads are are closed. Other than that, the spring is really an awesome time. If we do get a period um, with a high pressure system above us and we get blue skies and sunshine, that can literally last for weeks. On the other hand, if we get gray clouds and snow, that could also last for weeks. So you really are taking a bit of a chance. People then say, well, what about the summer months? Summer months, from a weather perspective, are generally an awesome time to come, although we always like to tell people that it can snow here any time of the year except July. 
I mean, I remember years when we had eight days of snow in a row towards the end of June, and old timers who've been here longer than I have uh, tell me about times when it actually did snow in July, but in the whatever it is, 17, 18 years that I've been in this area, I haven't seen snow in July. The downside in summer is that it is really, really, really crowded. In recent years, the crowds have got so bad. Our motel is located about a mile or 1.6 kilometers from the main entrance to Yellowstone. On a bad day, the traffic is lining up in a traffic jam past our motel. And incidentally, now that I mention our motel, if you're looking for a place to stay, please go to westyellowstonelodge.com. That's westyellowstonelodge.com. And you'll find that we have pretty competitive rates. Now, I'll talk a little later in this podcast about ways that you can avoid the crowds to some extent. But please be aware that it does get very, very crowded in the summer. It gets so crowded, in fact, that at a lot of the more popular locations, like um, some of the geyser basins on the lower loop, particularly the lower geyser basin and the midway geyser basin, the parking lots just get jam-packed. We also operate a tour company, which you can see at yellowstonetours.net. And when we're running tours, if we do get there at a busy time of the day, we are literally not able to accompany our guests on that part of the tour. We have to drop them off as close to the trailhead as we can get and then circle around. But in fact, there are times when the park service will actually close the parking lot so you can't even get in. So that is a problem that you're going to run into in the summer. Apart from that, it is really delightful because we don't get that much rain in the summer. The rains we do get are generally, not always, but generally, in the form of thunderstorms that build up, pass through, and then leave pretty quickly. The other downside of coming here in the summer is that hotel prices are really expensive. So let's consider the fall. I know that I said that the summer prices are pretty expensive, but we found at our motel anyway that towards the end of August, and then perhaps the first 10 days, two weeks of September is traditionally a quieter time. It's traditionally a time when the schools have gone back and for whatever reason, we're not getting a lot of people coming to West Yellowstone, which is where we are located. It's a little bit early for the bulk of the fishermen to come here. We've got some of the best fly fishing anywhere in the world, uh, but that'll be the subject of another podcast. So the fall can be a really delightful time to come as well. One of the highlights of the fall is what we call the elk rut. When I say the elk rut, you've got the bull elk budling to attract the cow elk. And one of the best places literally in the world to watch the elk and rut is not too far from West Yellowstone in the... um, in the Madison Valley. But once again, I'll get that, I'll get to that in in another podcast as well. You also have the bears starting to look for food towards the end of the fall because they know that they're going to be going into hibernation in the not too distant future and they're going to be looking for food. The flip side is make sure that you're not that food. Make sure that if you do get off the established uh, trails in the built-up areas, make sure that you have bear spray with you. In addition, it can be a great time to come for the changing of colors in the trees. Now, bear in mind, once again, we are at uh, altitude here. Yellowstone is high up, and we're also reasonably far north, so the colors do tend to change a little earlier than you may expect. The fall is not as busy as the summer months, And for that reason, just as in the spring, you'll find that in the fall, the hotel rates are going to be fairly significantly lower, even though there really are no great deals to be had in Yellowstone these days. Also in the fall, though, you can run into problems 
with snow and road closures the later in the season that you get. Once we get into October, it's not unusual to have significant snow. And with the weather starting to get cold, the roads uh, start to get cold as well. And there is accumulation of snow and possibly ice on the road. And the park service may close uh, certain roads down if they feel that it is going to be a, a problem. And unfortunately, this can last for days. We try and discourage people from taking our tours. And once again, you can see those tours at yellowstonetours.net. We try and discourage people from taking our tours really late in the fall, because if you come here and the roads are closed and they're closed or some of the roads are closed for two, three, four days in a row, as you might imagine, that'll really put a damper on your on your vacation. I mentioned at the start of this podcast that in addition to the best season of the year to come, I was going to talk about time as well. In recent years, when we run our tours into the park, we've started leaving pretty early. We've started leaving just before sunrise. And the reason for this is actually twofold. Number one, we want to avoid the big crowds that I mentioned to you particularly in the most popular locations, the Lower Geyser Basin, the Midway Geyser Basin, Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. Old Faithful's not such a big deal because there is plenty of, of parking and there's a lot more space there. But some parts of the park are going to be absolutely jam-packed. And the earlier you leave, the more chance you have of not necessarily having the location to yourself, but of there not being maddening crowds there. So say you're staying on the west side of the park at West Yellowstone, or if you're staying um, at Old Faithful itself, and you want to see the geyser basins between, say, Old Faithful and Madison Junction. And by the way, if you want to see a map of the park so you know what I'm referring to, please go to one of our sites, westyellowstonelodge.com forward slash map, westyellowstonelodge.com forward slash map, and you can see to what I am referring. The busiest stretch of road in the park is what um, is called the West Yellowstone Madison Corridor. So it's a stretch of road between West Yellowstone and Madison Junction. And my goodness, you come here in the summer sometime and you want to go into the park at say 8.30. Unfortunately, uh, there's another two or 3,000 of your closest friends who are also trying to get into the park. That section of road is 14 miles. What's that? Probably, I don't know, 20, 21 kilometers, perhaps. Uh, Maybe a little bit more than that. And it normally takes me, if I'm not stopping, maybe 20 minutes, 21 minutes. There's times when it takes you over two hours, and I'm not making that up. That's over two hours to drive 14 miles because there's so much traffic. And when people see a bison on the road, people get excited, and understandably so. So even if there's one little old bison standing there by herself, you'll find people stopping and because they stop, the traffic starts backing up behind them. And before you know it, there's this massive traffic jam. And the traffic jam, as I mentioned before, is not only in the park, but it's also outside the park. You, you can wait in line to get into that park. Golly, on one of those days when the line's going back a mile and a half, you can wait an hour and a half, two hours, pretty easily. So to avoid that, if you can get out of bed early, try and do it. Get out of bed. We generally, as I say, start just before sunrise. So most of the um, summer, we're up and about at 5.45, picking up our guests. And people ask us, well, what time does Yellowstone open? The way I like to say, the way I like to answer that, and admittedly, it's a bit of a smart ass answer, is that, well, it opens in the third week of April and it closes again in the end of the first week of November because the gates do not close. They may not be man, there may not be anybody collecting fees, but uh, you can pretty much get into Yellowstone 24 hours a day. Now, there may be some reasons why that's not such a, a good idea. I'm not sure that you want to be driving in the dark inside Yellowstone There are far too many occasions when animals get killed. It's dark, buffalo are the same color as the road, bears are the same color as the road. 
you don't see them, you're driving too fast, and another animal gets 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 killed. And you really, obviously, it goes without saying, you want to avoid that. So try and get into the park early so you don't run into traffic in the Madison uh, to West Yellowstone or the other way around corridor. And then you can go see some of those magnificent geyser basins without having to worry about there being thousands of people there and not being able to find parking. So get into the park early. Then by the same token, we generally find that the worst of the crowds at the entrance gates are over by most days, 1, one thirty, sometime around there. That isn't cast in stone, but that is generally when that happens, except for the south entrance, because the south entrance, people are coming up from Grand Teton National Park all day. So that entrance uh, is still going to be busy um, throughout the day, pretty much. The evening is a great time to visit Yellowstone as well. And I've just remembered, I forgot to mention the second reason for leaving early in the morning, and that is bear sightings. You've got much more chance of seeing bears just before dawn and just um, after sunrise when there are a lot more of them to be seen out and about. So that's another reason we like to run our tours starting a little earlier because it gives our guests a much greater chance of seeing bears. And similarly, um, at, uh, at night as well. Once again, though, the problems at night is that, um, are that you do not want to be driving in the dark for the, mention, for the reasons that I mentioned before. So you may be asking yourselves, well, what about winter? Well, what about winter? In the winter months, apart from the north entrance, which I've already mentioned, Yellowstone is closed to over road traffic. In other words, you can't take a regular car or bus or motorbike into the park. You can only go in by snowmobile or snow coach. And the numbers of snowmobiles and snow coaches are very much limited by the by the park service but that'll be the subject of another one of our Yellowstone podcasts thank you so much for listening if you want to check out all of our Yellowstone podcasts please go to yellowstonepodcasts.com if you'd like to take a tour of Yellowstone you can see all the tours we offer at yellowstonetours.net looking for lodging in the West Yellowstone area and that is at the west entrance to Yellowstone National Park. Please try westyellowstonelodge.com. We also offer hikes into the park, shorter hikes, anywhere from two hours to a day. And that you can see at yellowstonedayhikes.com. Thank you for listening to this Yellowstone podcast and catch you next time.